Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to map up your Xbox controller to your Windows machine so you can use it on the Nestopia emulator, which is a NES emulator. If you want to know how to actually just set up the emulator overall and the different options in there and the features, I've got a separate video covering that and I'll put that in the description. But first of all, I want to cover 360, Xbox One and Xbox Series controllers in terms of how you connect them. They're a bit different depending on if you have wired, wireless, you know, new, old in, in some cases. But let me cover that. Okay, so we'll get to this link in a second. So if you have Xbox 360 wired controller, this is the one where the cable is in there and it's not detachable, unless you break it, that is. This is plug and play, nothing else required. Drivers will get automatically installed by Windows. If you have a wireless controller, you cannot use one of these charger cables. It only transfers power, not data. And what you'll need is a dongle. And this is an extra expense if you wasn't, you know, didn't think, factor it in, but it is what it is. You connect it up, press the, the black one and, you know, a white one, for example. I've got the white one. You press the button on here. Once it's connected, you press the sync button on your Xbox controller and the lights start flashing, my chair's slowly going down, and they'll connect. Okay, so that's 360. For Xbox One, this is where it gets a bit interesting, or a bit annoying, I would say. So with Xbox One, if you want to do wired, you plug in a micro USB cable, plug the other end in, into your computer, you're all good to go. If you want to do wireless, if you have a newer one, then you'll have Bluetooth. If you have an older one, you'll have wireless proprietary technology, which you will require a dongle for. And not the 360 dongle, quite a different dongle, which is annoying. Okay, so I'll provide a link to this. This will help you identify which model of Xbox One controller you have. And if you have the Bluetooth version, great. Soon, later in this video, I'll show you how to hook this up via Bluetooth, because it's the same process for the Xbox Series controller. If you have an older one, like this one, this is a launch controller, you will need a Xbox One dongle. And it's one of these right here. You just plug it in. There is a button at the side, as you can see there, press that, light will start flashing. You press the sync button at the top there for a few seconds. This will start flashing and it will all connect. All good to go. If you have an Xbox Series controller, for wired, you plug in a USB-C cable, other end into your computer, and it's all good to go, plug and play. If you want to use wireless, you just need Bluetooth. So either a dongle or built-in Bluetooth as it is in like pretty much all laptops these days. And let's sync it up. And the sync process for Bluetooth, the same if you have a newer Xbox One controller that has Bluetooth built in as well. So you just search for Bluetooth. You can either, you know, do it in one of two ways. Go add Bluetooth or other device and click Bluetooth or go to go to device and printers, add a device. This is the more older school menu. And I always use this one if the newer one don't work. For some reason, sometimes some things don't work with certain devices. So that's just a little extra tip for you guys. Click that. Before we click Bluetooth, which will go into search mode, we want to put this into pairing mode. To do that, you press the sync button at the top for a few seconds. Then this Xbox logo will start flashing pretty fast. There we go. Click Bluetooth, go to Xbox wireless controller. You know the other one, if it's just picking up another controller I've got, go to done, that's it. And now what we need to do is just find a, what was gonna say, oh, this is extra step, just type in game, set up USB game controllers, and in here, go to properties. If it detects the joysticks and the buttons, you're all good to go. Okay, so that's it. Now we can actually open up the emulator. Open it up to configure it. We don't need one or more joystick device IDs when not recognized. If you want to remap the affected keys to the new devices. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably gone into compatibility mode. So if you have that issue where some of the joysticks don't work, just close it. You'll probably put it into compatibility mode and then you know it should be fine. Okay, go to options, input. And here we go. So now for this, if you want to map, let's say pad one to this button, double click it and I want to do the left key. 
there we go. If I'm press enter for this, oh no, enter is not what I want for that. And up, right, down, select, or literally do this button, start, and A and B, I'll just do A and B. So B, I'll do that. A, I'll do that. I'm not really interested in the other keys. So I can just, I mean, I can map it, but or I can just let it, you know, time out and not map it. I don't particularly want to map it. Okay, ignore that. That's just popped up. And that's really it. So you can map it for different pads. I'm just doing it for pad one. So you could even map this to like a power pad, for example, which is pretty cool. Or a power glove. <laughs> Click OK. And let's launch up the game. My chair has gone down a fair bit. <laughs> I need to get a new chair. Okay, so let's go to. Uh, what did I want to go to? View screen size. I'll probably to three times. Let me do two like five times. That, yeah, that's just fine. And now I can obviously just press select to switch between the options. Start to go onto it. Left and right to move. Jump. And that's it. The video's all done. It's all set up. I'm just going to have a little player Mario and then I'll wrap up, but we're all done. Ah, uh, in the newer version of the Mario, if you collect like a that mushroom, not the mushroom, the flower to f put fireballs out on, and you're and you're of a smaller size, then you'll go to the bigger size and go transform to that. Clearly, in the older ones, they were a lot more punishing. I mean, oh, that got rid of the whole shebang. <laughs> Takes it back to the smallest one. And then I can obviously pause. And that's it. So I'm just going to shut this down. And remember, you can always, you know, do save states as well. So shut this down. There we go. Okay, so that is how you set up your Xbox controller. To your Windows machine, I've gone really low down. <laughs> so you can, you know, play it on Nostopia, which is an NES emulator. Straight after this, I'll be recording a video on how to set it up for your PS4 controller. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And I'll be doing loads more emulator videos as well. Coming soon. Thanks for watching. And see you soon. Bye-bye.